Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out the brand new Devil Savior DS06 sweeping slash skipjack or rampage from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now if you are after adding this guy to your collection he's currently available and in stock right now over at Bombuspy and for that of course I shall throw a link down in the description box below. I'm not sure about yourselves but I'm in so so excited for this particular Constructicon to actually release as for those of you who are familiar with my studio series reviews you guys all know that skipjack slash rampage is in fact my favorite Constructicon and this guy actually looked remarkable and getting him in hand oh my goodness he is by far my favorite devil savior figure to date they've done such an astonishing job and this is in fact the second to last Constructicon that devil savior have yet to release so once we do get the final Constructicon we would of course be able to complete devastator and considering that we now have the second leg we're very close to actually completing that guy and i'll be sure to show you towards the end of the video how devastator is shaping up so far and i've got to be honest and say that it looks to be a remarkable piece now starting off firstly here we have skipjack in his caterpillar bulldozer alt mode now this looks really really impressive as per tradition with these devil saver products the paintwork is absolutely exceptional you can see here for the main scoop section completely picked out in a very nice metallic silver how we've got some of that dry brushing as well as weather dirt effect just to give you the impression that this really is a grimy vehicle that's been working its way through the deserts of egypt you can see as we turn our attention here to the side we've got all of these various different pistons and hydraulics really really awesome attention to detail and the actual cast yellow plastic they've used is really really nicely done you can see here towards the side of the vehicle we've got these huge huge massive treads of which of course would have been back to actually help this vehicle roll along the ground and much like the front of the scoop these have been painted and sculpted really really nicely you can see once again some of that dirt effect sadly they can't actually rotate just due to the nature of the transformation but still the sculpt work looks really really impressive as we turn our attention here to a top perspective you can once again see some really nice spring slash hydraulic detailing and we also do in fact actually get this smokestack which is a separate component which sticks up and you can see the cockpit there completely cast out of transparent plastic just to give you the impression that of course there is in fact actually an interior to this and then as we we just turn our attention here to the back of the vehicle sadly it's not the best looking you can clearly see the thumbs of the figure hanging out as so can you with the missile pods but honestly it doesn't look too bad especially considering that it is once again the back and then as we just turn our attention to this side it is of course more of the same so overall a very very nicely done looking vehicle now if i had any critique with this it's that i do believe this is the first constructicon of which cannot actually roll along the ground there are no wheels on this at all and that's mainly down to the simple fact that these treads break up into so many different individual components in order to help aid the combined form as well as the robot mode but I really do think that maybe they could have found some kind of way to have added a few wheels here on this solid piece of plastic and then maybe they could have stuck some here at the back I'm just sure there was an alternative around this but as it stands who's going to be really rolling this along the ground it will no doubt stay in robot mode or combined mode but definitely such a fantastic looking vehicle really hefty really really robust feeling and everything holds together impeccably well now bringing out the studio series skipjack here for a comparison you can immediately tell the differences between the paint as well as the sculpt work but something which is actually rather similar is is the scale now when we get this guy transformed in robot mode it's a completely different story this guy will in fact dwarf the actual studio series version but here for the actual bulldozer mode you can see that they're actually not far off which is quite impressive devil savior definitely have done something incredibly special in regards to the engineering of this guy but as we just turn our attention here from a side perspective you can see that they are roughly the same size and something else which is actually quite interesting to note is that despite this guy being significantly more expensive than the ss version they still do have very similar back kibble in not being able to actually conceal the thumbs here for the vehicle mode but honestly a really really impressive looking figure you can tell in terms of the attention to detail for this devil savior version it just absolutely obliterates the studio series release which of course it's going to considering this is about three times the price of the actual studio series voyager but once again a very very impressive looking figure you can see here even towards the front of this actual almost scoop section the paintwork is just so so much nicer as so is all of the various hydraulics as well as of course pistons that we've got going on here for the vehicle mode so turning to transformation here for skipjack one of the contributing factors as to why this guys in fact one of my favorite ds figures is not only the design but also the transformation it is by far one of the most effective yet simplistic conversions that we've got so far but that's not to say that it is by any stretch of the imagination simplistic so to begin with you're going to want to take this smokestack section here and just compress this along this bed section we can then spin our attention here to the back and just remove the missile pods and set them there off to the side you're then going to want to flare these pieces up just to allow for some additional clearance what we can then do is come to this section just disengage this and of course come to this side and repeat the same process we can then take the finger of the robot mode and in fact actually detach it here from this hydraulic section rotate that there to the back and of course spin your attention to this side and repeat the exact same process so just spin this here all the way to the back just like so with that completed we can then bring these pieces here out like so and then you are in fact going to want to compress this along the side and you can see we've got a tab that will in fact peg into that slot so just snap that in there of course come to this side 
and repeat the same process. So clip that there into place. What you're then going to want to do is essentially pull this piece forwards, take these, hinge these to the back, and of course repeat the same process just like so, and then compress this main section here over the top so that we're left with something that looks along the lines of this. Once that's completed, we can then spin our attention here to this tread and gently just wriggle it out of this port and extend this out, of course, come to this side and repeat the same process. So just disengage that there, hinge that section out. You'll then want to turn your attention to this piece, disengage this from the underside, flip this tab up, which will in fact lock this section into place for bot mode. So just snap that in there just like so. We can then pull this out slightly and then rotate this section around, flip this piece out, and that will essentially become the heel spur for the bot motors. Of course, not only is he a very abstract looking design, but he's going to be a very top heavy design due to the nature of the arms. What we can then do is take these pieces here and just snap these here like so. Take this piece, extend this all out, and just keep that flush along the back. We can then collapse those along the sides, and you can see we've got these tabs that should in fact just rest in those slots just like so on both sides. So just snap them there into place. We can then spin our attention here to this top piece, take this and just angle this section here back. You can then take these components here and just hinge those like so, just to reveal some additional mechanical detail. What we can then do is take Skipjack's head, pull this entire region up, and just extend the neck. We can take these panels, pull these to the front and then just snap them into place, take these here and just squish them along the side. Raising the camera up so we can turn our attention here to the arms. As you can see, he's getting incredibly big. What we're then going to want to do is take these treads here and just extend those until this tab does fill this slot. So snap that there into place. We can then rotate this finger here to the front. We can take this thumb here, hinge this down and hinge this section down. We can then bring this piece down like so and then just according that and hinging that tread. We can then come to this side and of course repeat the exact same process. So hinge this tread here all the way around, come to this section, pull this out, extend this section. We can then take this, fold this out and of course repeat the exact same process here for this side. Spin your attention here to the top and you are going to want to rotate this tiny little claw piece and then just extend that up and flare that there over the top of Skipjack's shoulders. So we're left with something that looks along the lines of this. And then for some finishing touches here for robot mode, you are in fact going to want to compress this. So bring this shoulder forwards. So allow for some clearance, compress this, hinge this up, flare this out to the side. And of course, come to this side and repeat the same process. So hinge that like so, making sure that all of this stays tabbed there into place. Flare this section out, bring the arms back. And then we can take these missile pods, just snap them there into place on the top of the shoulders. And there we've got Skipjack fully transformed up into his super alien, super Cybertronian, super Bayverse looking awesome robot mode. This guy, much like how he appeared in the movie, just looks insane. Considering that he's this almost serpent Cybertronian, they've really done a fantastic job, especially in actually being able to get him to stand. But we'll touch base more of that in just a second as we bring him in here and take a closer look at the details. My goodness, the face sculpt is exceptional. This looks exactly how it appeared in the movie. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't actually believe we see the yellow version of Skipjack actually transform in the film. I know we see Rampage, and of course they share incredibly similar character designs, so I'm almost hoping that we can in fact actually see a red repaint of this guy and no doubt it will be on the horizon eventually but to get the more yellow more devastator accurate color scheme first of course makes perfect sense but you can see the attention to detail just looks so bug like you can see there the quadruple eyes we've got some fantastic gunmetal silver highlights to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt and not to mention that the yellow paint looks great but also this really really nice dirty grime wash that we've got applied over the top you can see here the actual spinal section for the neck looks really nice we've got some nice gunmetal pauldrons here for the shoulders you can once again see some of that really nice dirty effect applied all the way throughout the figure really picking out some of the sharper details of the sculpt i love how the missile pods do in fact actually attach here on the shoulders i'm not entirely sure if that's accurate to the movie but that looks wicked and i can definitely imagine him firing away at sam with wiki you can see as we turn our attention here to the arms once again we've got some of that spring-loaded detailing which looks fantastic turning our attention to skipjack's arms honestly one of my favorite character traits about this particular design this just looks absolutely nuts of course these are comprised out of the treads that we saw in the vehicle mode but they just look so so well done 
and we've got these whips here and now that we are in a much larger format with of course a much higher budget these are fully articulated so you really are able to do some crazy crazy poses with these and they just look so so great you can see here for the claws really nice attention to detail going on for the fingers as so for these particular hydraulic sections and then as we just flip our attention here to the torso section of skipjack once again amazing attention to detail you can see all of the various different hydraulics and spring-loaded detailing we have in fact actually got a die cast component here for the center mainly to help aid the actual weight of devastator in combined mode but once again we'll touch base more of that in just a second spinning our attention here to the back i also think this cleans up impeccably well you can see unlike the ss version the actual scoop section compresses into one middle component which is just really really nicely done you can see how it cleans up super super nicely some of the excess vehicle mode kibble looks really coherent here at the back you can see as we just turn our attention to the rear of the figure once again for some fantastic paintwork as well as sculpt work and the actual stand piece as well looks really really impressive and actually not too distracting from the overall silhouette either which is really really nicely done and then if we just spin our attention once more here to the front you can see this almost springy bouncy thing that of course you would in fact hop around with on the movie we've got some really nice spring loaded detail here going through the center some nice gun metal as well as of course some fantastic looking dry brushing and surprisingly this figure is actually very very articulated now getting down to the head we do in fact get a swivel joint which can look left to right as well as hinge up and down sadly there's no ball joint it would have been super awesome to have in fact actually been able to rotate this left to right and that really is the only area of critique that i actually have in regards to the articulation as a whole but the neck can also hinge up and down mainly due to transformation the arms are absolutely loaded with joints so we can hinge these sections out of the way to allow for a shoulder joint forwards and backwards of course you can rotate this here left to right the 4360 hinge joint here at the main shoulder we also do in fact unlike the ss version get a proper double jointed elbow here which is fantastic and when we actually flip out his cannons believe me it's a sight to behold we also get so many different individual segments going on here for the treads and once again you can compress these forwards or of course recess them backwards completely up to your own personal preference sadly no form of bicep rotation but that's mainly just due to the transformation of the combined form we do in fact get a hinge joint here at the thumb as well as an actual transformation joint so depending on how wide you actually wish to have the hands that's completely up to your own personal preference we get three hinge joints here at the fingers so one at the base one of course at the center and then one at the knuckle and the same can also be said here for this side which is awesome we do in fact get a swivel joint here at this upsection so this can crunch forwards and backwards at two joints so one here and one here so you can crunch them forwards crunch them backwards we also do in fact actually get a proper waist rotation joint here which is super super awesome as well as here so an almost double range of motion going on for there and then finally here for this low section it is fairly restricted just due to the nature of the design but if you did wish to disengage this section for transformation you can in fact tilt this forwards ever so slightly but once again it will break up that sculpt so overall in terms of articulation for such an abstract design I definitely do think this is a vast improvement when in comparison to pretty much any of the other skipjacks that's come before him and just in terms of the overall design as well as accuracy to the movie and the paintwork they truly have done such a smashing job and it doesn't end there either so in the movie Rampage of course deploys these wicked blasters from his hands in order to actually almost intimidate Sam with Wiki and you can absolutely do this here with this guy so in order to demonstrate that you just want to split essentially this tread section we can then flip out skipjack's cannon and then here with these fingers you are supposed to just rotate them to the back just like so here for the thumb bring that forwards and then for this side i believe that it is something along the lines of this just really to get them out of the way and of course come to this side and repeat the same process so flip out that cannon snap that there along the side what we can then do is take this here just like so take the thumb hinge that forwards and with this section just rotate this to the back just so that it's out of the way and there you've got skipjack with those double barreled cannons looking really really awesome just how he did in the movie some weird wiki and you can once again see the paint as well as sculpt work on these really really does look awesome so overall i'm blown away here with the robot mode he is by far the best devil savior robot mode constructicon that we've gotten from this entire line so far in my personal opinion and in regards to a skipjack slash rampage this is no doubt the best version of this character that we have ever ever gotten and here for that skipjack robot mode comparison of course we've got the new devil saber version on the right and the studio series version on the left and both fantastic figures especially considering the budget of the studio series version and devil saber version i cannot fault them at all i think they're really really awesome but of course with this much higher budget almost npm scale as well they've been able to achieve so much more such as the actual fully articulated arms the attention to detail in regards to not only the sculpt but the impeccable paintwork and of course the treads the treads are just fully loaded with joints something that wasn't terrible with the studio series version but when you actually get this guy in your hands you are in 
in fact able to achieve so many more poses than you were with this Voyager. So it really is just going to come down to personal preference as to whether or not you want more mainline figures in your collection or you are after the best version, the almost masterpiece version of these characters as I personally don't think Hasbro is ever ever going to produce Constructicons in the masterpiece scale officially. So this Devil Savior version truly is the best bet in actually getting the most definitive representation of this guy in your collection and you can just see here in this comparison I absolutely do believe that they've been very successful in achieving that. He looks so so awesome. And whilst on the topic of masterpiece here we've got Devil Savior Skipjack compared next to the official Takara MP Bumblebee. Now you can see here that the scale personally I think is slightly off in the movie Skipjack or Rampage did appear to be a lot bigger. Bumblebee essentially was able to crawl all around this guy so the scale is slightly off but once again in terms of accuracy I definitely think he's up there with the MP figures maybe even been better than some of the official stuff that we've gotten from Hasbro and Takara and in terms of paintwork it just absolutely obliterates the official figures. I really do think they're producing some of the best painted third party figures currently out there on the market especially for the live action movies. So turning to Sweeping slash Skipjack's final transformation that of course being into the combined form to be completely honest with you this is really the only transformation that I find to be the most difficult out of them all as there really is a lot of mass shifting that actually goes on with this guy which once again is just a prime example of how well done Devil Saver figures are in fact. So to begin with you're going to want to turn your attention here to the back take this tripod section and just rotate that in like so we can then come here to the cockpit just compress all of that in snap that there into place come to this section here hinge this up and of course repeat the same process hinge this section up and just snap that there into place now some of the torso components we are in fact going to in fact actually compress just merely for ease as of course you don't want to bump into these and then later on we'll bring them out just to finish off the actual legs so these particular panels i would recommend in fact actually compressing just like so we're then going to spin our attention here to the front remove the missile pods for now set them there off to the side these particular almost collarbone pieces or shoulder pieces you are going to want to bring forwards just compress them along the side and the same can also be said here for these sections so just bring them forwards we can then take the head compress that there into that cavity and I personally like to work here on the arms now there is a lot that goes on with these arms so to begin with what you're going to want to do is take this tread section here at the back just compress this like so we are then going to want to take this section here disengage that you can see how it did in fact lock this elbow joint in and we are going to want to compress all of these joints and you can see this tab will in fact peg into that slot so snap that in there once that's complete we can just rest that there along the side we are then going to want to hinge this section up rotate this component around and in fact actually pose the thumb so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this once that's completed we can then spin our attention here to the back you can see how we have in fact got a tiny little slot that a tab here will in fact peg into so hinge this up and just snap that there into place solidifying this connection once that's completed we can then take this finger here bring this around just essentially straighten that out and then here you're going to want to hinge at the top you can see how we do in fact just rest this section there like so and then for this you're going to want to compress this tread in swivel this piece out like so and we do in fact get a tab that should peg into this slot. Now this is easier said than done. This side is in fact a lot easier to tab in when in comparison to the other side of which I haven't actually been successful once in doing so. But this is supposed to just lock there into place like so and just compress the tread like that. And that is essentially one part of the toe fully transformed. Of course come to this side and you guys guessed it. Repeat the exact same process. So come to this locking mechanism. Disengage that. Take this tread here at the back. Compress that in. We can then compress all of that until that snaps into place come here to this rotate this around and then just tuck the thumb in like so you'll then want to bring this here all the way around like so spin your attention to this side and of course once again we've got that slot and that tab on the back of the finger that you will just want to peg into so just snap that in there we can then spin our attention here to the front take this here compress that along the side fold that in hinge this part of the tread around and once again this tab is supposed to peg into this slot but you can see that there is in fact a slight molding defect here on mine which makes it incredibly difficult to actually install that it's not detrimental to transformation as long as you've got it aligned in roughly the same position it shouldn't be a problem at all but that is definitely just something worth noting we're then going to want to come here to these back pieces Fully extend those out of the way for now just to allow for some additional clearance we can then take these shoulder pieces here 
spin them around like so, just compress them. And of course, repeat the same process. We're then going to want to come here at the shoulder, disengage that. And of course, come to this side and repeat the same process. So just disengage that, which should hopefully loosen up this back piece. Now you have got, also got to take these and just attach this, which should allow this entire section here to shift upwards. Now these tabs are in fact going to peg into these slots. They won't in fact actually stay there securely until you've taken the toes and in fact actually hinge these in. So these are now going to peg into those slots. So snap that there and of course come to this side and snap that there into place bring these two halves together just align them up appropriately we can begin to neaten everything up in just a second and now of course once again those slots there will in fact peg into those tabs and then at the same time these slots are in fact going to peg into these tabs so shift that in shoot that in come to this side and of course shoot that section in so that is essentially the front part of Devastator's foot completely transformed. What we can then do is come to this upper section, rotate this piece around. You'll then want to come to this die cast component and in fact actually shoot this section forward. And now these hydraulics will in fact peg into brand new slots here and here. So just snap them in there. What we can then do is take this tread here, compress this like so, take these components, bring these forwards and they will lock into those slots there. So just angle this down until they align up appropriately and just peg in there we can then take these this tab will peg into that slot so peg that in there spin your attention to this side and snap that section into place we can then take this angle this to the back and just fold that hook piece into place we can then in fact actually hinge this up rotate it compress this down into that cavity extend this now the instructions do state that you're in fact actually supposed to clip this here into this die cast rod now to be completely honest this is way more hassle than it's actually worth there is a minimal clearance and you will no doubt in fact actually stress or break the plastic so what i tend to do is just essentially rest it there as it really does the exact same thing it's not going to dangle out of place at all and you don't have to actually run the risk of applying too much pressure to actually peg that in there as it is super super difficult to actually get locked into place now once that's completed we're near enough done so you are then going to want to come here to these sections disengage that now a step which i've actually forgotten to do beforehand is in fact actually disengage this and tab that in so you will want to just unlock a few of these panels here just to allow for this to actually snap into place you can see here that this will disengage and should in fact actually shoot into this piece so we just hinge all of this up and then shoot that gray section there into that hollow space there just snap that into place and of course come to this side and repeat the same process once those are in you can then proceed to click everything back into place so just snapping all of these hydraulics into place snapping those components down snapping that into place everything should look something along the lines of this we can then of course tab this in there and then with this here you can spin this around and you can see how we've got a tiny slot that this tab should in fact facilitate so just snap that in there compress that like so spin your attention to this side and repeat the exact same process so snap that in there and then just hinge this up, peg that tab in there, angle this all appropriately, ensure that, that looks something along the lines of this. And then for some finishing touches, we can bring these missile pods in and just snap them there onto the side. And there you've got Skipjack fully transformed up into one of the legs of Devastator. And once again, looking remarkable. Now, of course, when we actually get all of the Constructicons out, I'll showcase Devastator in its full entirety, but we'll very quickly go through the detail. You can just see this is remarkable. The paintwork is just absolutely astonishing. As so is the overall proportions. Definitely incredibly accurate to what we actually saw in the movie. But you guys all want to actually see how this implements onto the Constructicons that we've got already. So without further ado, let's showcase that. So to begin with, you are in but just going to want to hinge this panel here out to the side as the combiner port is in fact actually going to slide into this groove so let's bring in overload now i'm going to try my absolute best to convey this on camera as devastator is one massive piece but essentially you are just going to want to align that slot up with this and i would recommend using this here to just sort of force that in lock that there into place and there you've got skipjack fully implemented into devastator 
And my goodness, is this guy looking insane. I'll bring the camera further out just so you can kind of see as to what we've got so far. And then, of course, we'll wrap up the review. So as you guys can probably tell, this Devastator looks absolutely insane and is no doubt going to absolutely obliterate the Studio Series version. Honestly, he looks remarkable. He's no doubt going to be one of the best pieces that I own in my collection. And you could just see how massive, enormous, and how accurate he is to the movie. Honestly, truly, he is just such an astonishing piece. And I really cannot wait to, in fact, actually pick up the final Constructicon so that we can complete this guy. Now, Skipjack does, in fact, actually also include a few of these metal rods. You may be able to see one now. It's just essentially there to help actually aid this figure when standing, as he doesn't really have any issues in standing. But, of course, considering how weighty that upper torso is and how expensive this guy is, if you just want for some reassurance when on the shelf, I would definitely recommend to use them. But we'll touch base more with them in the Devastator review, as he comes with a few different ones for you to get this guy into some crawling poses, and it just wouldn't be right to showcase them in this video without the other arm. But definitely looking to be a fantastic piece, even here with the Constructicons that we've gotten released so far. And so, some final thoughts here for this Devil Savior DS06 sweeping, also known, of course, as Skipjack from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Overall, as mentioned multiple times throughout this review, this is by far my favorite Devil Savior Constructicon that's been released so far. Not only is the design my favorite Constructicon design, but I think they've done a smashing job in replicating it. The vehicle mode looks really, really accurate. Of course, it's not going to be 100% perfect, as this is essentially a triple changer, which can combine. And at the masterpiece scale, it really would be difficult to, in fact, to actually get it 100% perfect. But for the most part, I think the attention to detail, the paintwork, the hydraulics, just the overall proportions of that vehicle mode looks great. If I had any minor critiques, it would be that I really wish they could have found a way to have actually implemented a few wheels onto that so that you could have actually rolled it along the ground, but that's just the child in me. Of course, for adult collectors, that's really not going to be an issue at all, and that is really the target audience where I think these constructor cons are aimed at. Transformation also is by far one of the best that we've seen from this DS line so far. Of course, this line started off with a very complex figure, that being Mixmaster, but gradually the releases have become slightly more easier to, in fact, convert and skip Jack is definitely a prime example of that. They've nailed the engineering. Very simplistic transformation from vehicle to robot. Robot to combined mode is another story, but once again, not too complex. And especially considering how accurate he is, I really can't complain all that much. Bot mode looks fantastic. Excellent range of motion in regards to the arms. The treads are fantastic. The paintwork is great. The proportions are great. And it's by far the best skipjack we've ever, ever gotten. And then as we turn to combined form, once again, looks fantastic. I won't dwell on that too much, as of course, we'll touch base with Devastator in the actual completed review, but it's looking to be an astonishing piece as I'm sure you guys were able to tell from that very brief snippet that I in fact showcased of all the Constructicons that we've gotten released so far. So with all that being said, if you are collecting Devil Saviors Devastator, then you have to add this guy to your collection. Or maybe if you just want to dip your toe into these Devil Saviors Constructicons, then I definitely think as an individual standalone release, Skipjack is by far one of the best independent figures that we've gotten so far. And with all that being said, he is currently available and in stock right now over at Bombusby. And for that, of course, I shall include a link down in the description box below. I'd love to know down in the comment section on what you guys think of this figure do you guys think that devastator is going to be as good if not better than the studio series version and also be sure to let me know what you thought of the figure and the review i thank you all for watching and until my next review i'll see you then